Hello everyone! In this video you can watch me make a cake stand again. This time I'm going to combine resin with the Hydroflow from Eli Gem. And this is an experiment to see if I can combine these two materials the way you are about to see in this video. I hope you enjoy this video and give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it a lot. So, what I mentioned, I'm going to make a cake stand and I'm going to uh, combine resin with the Hydroflow from Eli Gem. I hope you saw my uh, previous video in which I used the Hydroflow for some coasters. But now I want to make a cake stand and um, I'm using uh, three silicon geodum molds. And at the moment I'm making a barrier because I want to combine those two and I can't pour them um, uh, at once. So I need to pour first the resin and then the hydroflow. So that's why I'm making the barrier. And this is a soft molding dough and I know it will stick to the silicon and I can remove it very easy from the silicon. But yeah, uh, if I pour the resin, yeah, I need to find out if that also works and if it doesn't leak. But we will find out together. It's an experiment. I love to experiment and show it to you all. So the barriers are done and now I'm going to start with my resin pour. I'm starting with some clear on the edge of the barrier and those three geoda silicon molds are from molds and shapes uh, in three sizes they have four but I use the S, M and the L uh, geoda tray molds and they are of an amazing quality so if you are interested in one of these silicon molds the link to their website is in the description box below this video and if you use my promo code just paint 5 then you will also get 5% discount on your total value order so now on top of the clear I'm adding some fire glass in a nice pink color it has a, a, a mirror side and a colored side and um, I like this uh, glass, fire glass very much and hopefully this will work out because first I'm going to pour the resin part and then I need to let that dry then I'm going to remove the soft molding dough barrier and then I'm going to pour the hydro flow part and hopefully <laughs> it will uh, work out so I'm also going to use some uh, glass glitter, also in a pink shade, very nice. There you can see it, I'm adding it on top of the fire glass and the clear layer of la resin. And I'm very curious if this is going to work out or not. And, but yeah, this will not be a food safe cake stand because I can't add a clear layer of resin, a resin afterwards so um, if you um, put your ch chocolate or candy or sandwiches on it then it needs to be wrapped in a nice piece of paper so this color is one of my newer mica pigments it's the gilded rose very nice rose gold color and then next to it I'm pouring some uh, very transparent pink uh, resin. I added a few drops of the Ranger Tim Holtz alcohol ink in the color pink sherbet. And I'm filling the mold totally, not to the top yet. Pushing my glass glitter against my barrier. Yeah. 
Now I'm going to add a line of white, and this is the Casting Craft white. Hopefully that will give me some nice effects. And the next color is one of my newer colors. It's not listed yet, but it's the Aurora Red. It's an interference color. You can use it as is, but you can also add it to another color. Very nice pigment. And on top of that Aurora Red, I'm pouring some uh, clear with one drop of pink sherbet in it to push that color to the outside. There you can see it. And I'm also using uh, some sparkle white. It's also one of my pigments. Very nice uh, sparkly color. It's transparent, but uh, very nice, and you can use it in resin, but also add it to another uh, color. And for example, if you add it to a Bombay ink, then that will get a very nice sparkle. Adding more, because I need to fill it all the way to the top. And what I also uh, need to mention is that I lost one part of this video in which I uh, removed the barrier, but I will explain uh, what I uh, did. So I'm so sorry for that. Adding more of the sparkle white. So at the end, this will be a, a cake stand with a shiny side uh, from the resin and with uh, a matte side from the hydroflow because I'm going to uh, use a matte varnish because you need to varnish the hydroflow because I like that very much, the matte against the shiny uh, surface of the resin. Adding a more of the sparkle white. And some clear. And this uh, um, side will be uh, the bottom side. The other side will be uh, how it can be used. Using my heat gun to remove some air bubbles. I never use a torch. Because the flame of the torch is very hot. And uh, then you have a risk that your resin will stick to the silicon mold. And that's not good. Adding a little bit more pieces of fire glass. And then I'm almost done with the resin part. And uh, need to let this dry before I can uh, remove the barrier. So in this part of the video I will show you how I add some copper leaf, there you can see it, small pieces and hopefully they will stick to the hydro flow if I pour it on top of it. And what I already mentioned, I lost a part of this video of how I removed the barrier, 
But what I can mention is that it was not easy to remove it from the resin. What I forgot is that I uh, didn't apply a thin layer of Vaseline. I hope I pronounce it okay. Because if you add a thin layer of Vaseline on the inside of the barrier, then your resin will not stick to it, to the molding dough. So um, I uh, removed it with a steering stick, then I cleaned it with some uh, dish soap, and after that I uh, used some alcohol to clean it. And then I put it back into the... No, what I also did is that I taped the back of the resin part so if the hydro flow will leak underneath then I can remove it very easy and then I put it back into the silicon molds so that's what I did so I'm so sorry I lost that part of the video but um, if I would uh, do it again then I need to add a thin layer of uh, Vaseline on the inside of the molding dough barrier So hopefully this copper leaf will uh, stick to my hydro flow. So I'm not going to show you how I mix the hydro flow from Eli Chem. I will include a link in the right corner in which I show how I mix it. So um, then you can watch that uh, video. And also how I color the hydro flow. Because I'm also going to use a colored, there you can see it, a light blue color. And the hydro flow is um, a ratio of one part um, acrylic binder, water-based acrylic binder, and two and a half parts of uh, a powder, because it comes in two components. And it's um, an environmentally friendly uh, casting compound. And so you can see it's very thick. Normally it's thinner because... Yeah, and I think it's because of my um, room temperature. It was a very uh, sunny day here in the Netherlands when I did this. And um, I think that's why it uh, is a little bit thicker. But no problem, I can still uh, add it into my uh, silicon mold, push it against the resin. There you can see it. But normally it's uh, a thinner a mixture. And I mixed it okay, that's for sure. But I think it's because of the room temperature. And um, I colored it uh, with the Phaleo Fluid Acrylics in the color Turquoise. And if you want to color the hydro, hydro flow, then you uh, need to color the water-based acrylic binder first. And then add your mineral powder to it. And if it's uh, after that... If the shade is too light, then you can add a few drops more, but first you need to color that uh, water-based acrylic binder. So, and I have a working time of 10 to 20 minutes, and that depends on your room temperature. That's why I think it's uh, a thick mixture. And I can demold it after one to two hours. And I can sand it after two hours. So very fast uh, drying time. So that's great. And it's also heat resistant up to 125 Celsius. So hopefully <laughs> this will work out, that the two parts stick together. Now I'm trying to uh, make the surface a little bit more flat. 
but I think those two colors go very well together. But the other side will be the side um, to use it. Now I'm cleaning my resin because there are some parts of the hydro flow on top of the resin and I don't want that. Using a Q-tip to clean the edges, there you can see it. Then I'm going to start on my second tray. Pushing it into the silicon mold. All the supplies I'm using in this video you can find at the end of the video, but also in the description box below this video with the links to the websites as I always do. So if you're curious, please check out the description box. Cleaning my resin again with a piece of paper. And I'm not sure if I'm going to make it a two tier cake stand or a three tier cake stand, but yeah, need to think about it. And now on to the last one, the smaller tray. And if you have some left of the hydro flow, you, you don't have to throw it away. You can spread it on, onto a piece of uh, baking paper or what, yeah, on something uh, that doesn't stick and l leave it to dry. And then after it's dry, you can break it in small pieces and then you can use it again for the I think it's called terrazzo look. So that's what I uh, did. I had something left, so I didn't throw it away. I make small pieces of it, and then I will use it again in another uh, project. So the third one is also done. Need to let this dry before uh, I can take them out of the mold. So the hydro flow is dry, now I'm going to take those trays, geode trays, out of the silicon mold. The first one is already out, so that's great. And it goes very easy, doesn't stick. So that's great. Yeah, I show you that I have some <laughs> copper leaf uh, left in my silicon mold, so hopefully there's enough on it still. Removing some pieces of hydro flow. There you can see it from the edge. And this is how it looks. Still there is some copper leaf on it. I like it very much. It's not perfect. There are some um, air bubbles in it or imperfections. 
And at first I thought that's not nice, that's not good, but if I look longer at it, then I think I like it, because it gives uh, 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 an old look to it, a rough old look, and I like that very much. But yeah, this is an experiment to see if it uh, works or not. And they do stick together, so that's great. There you can see I'm removing my masking tape. Then you can also see the resin part. Very nice. And there is enough copper leaf still on the hydroflow part. So that's great. Looks very nice. Yeah, I still need to seal the hydroflow, not the resin, but only the hydroflow because otherwise. Uh, you can scratch it, and that's not good, and also need to seal the copper leaf. So I will use a matte varnish for that, because I like the matte and the shiny next to each other, what I already mentioned. And I will sand the other side, but that, yeah, that will be the, the bottom side, that will not be used. So if it's not totally flat, then that's no problem for me. So in this part of the video, you can watch me uh, sand the bottom side. And I'm using uh, a sandpaper with grit 400 and I'm using a little bit of water. And then I'm uh, sanding the hydro flow. Not too much, because this side will not be visible if you use it. Making it dry with a piece of paper. And the next step will be, uh, of course, varnish the hydroflow. Then I will uh, let that dry. And then I will um, attach the hardware. So I need to drill holes. I will include a video in the right corner, which you can watch how I drill the holes. Or oh, my boyfriend did, did it for me. And uh, then at the end of the video, I will show you all a close-up of... Uh, what the end result is. But so far I'm very pleased uh, with my experiment and how it looks already. And what I also want to mention, if you are interested in my mica pigments or chameleon mica pens, druzy silicon molds or glitter flakes, um, the link to my Etsy shop is in the description box below this video, also available in the USA and Canada by my associate Evelyn Schaefer. The link to her Etsy shop is also in the description box, so if you are interested, then uh, check out our Etsy shops. So now I'm going to add the first layer of varnish 
There you can see it. So I will add three thin layers. Not only this side, but also the other side. Because it needs to be totally sealed. And this is a very fast drying varnish. So after two hours I can add the second layer. I'm not going to show you that because you can see it now how I do it. Also the sides. And I hope you all like my experiments and also try it. Hopefully I inspired you all. And um, if you are not subscribed yet, I hope you do. Because that will help my channel a lot. And for the people that already have some of my uh, Just Paint supplies, there is a link to a Facebook group, my Facebook group, in the description box. And I really uh, like for you to show what you create with my uh, supplies. Because I'm very curious. And then we can share... Uh, our techniques and how the supplies look in resin or acrylic because some of my micro pigments can also be used in an acrylic binder so the link to my facebook group is in the description box so i'm almost done and then i will show you all the end result So this is the end result, I uh, attached the hardware, I have it outside in the sun and so you can see there are some imperfections on the hydro flow, some small holes, but what I already mentioned, I like it, gives a nice old rough look to it, there you can see the resin part with the nice effects, the sparkle, the glass glitter. But it's my first try, and um, so far I'm really liking it. There you can see again the sparkle of the sparkle white. So if you like what I'm doing, consider to subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up for this video, I appreciate it a lot. All the information to the supplies I've used you can find in the description box below this video. I want to thank you all for watching again and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Bye!